Hello again, it's good to be back with you, this time with an electric guitar. Um, I want to talk today about impedance matching, and it turns out this is a pretty handy way to uh, talk about it. So let, let's do that. Let me get some power going here. Okay, so what's an electric guitar do? Well, it takes vibrations from strings. There's a little thing called a pickup that turns it into electricity. The electricity goes, signal, goes down this wire into my little amplifier here, my little practice amp that I have on my shelf. Okay, well how's that sound? How's that work? Okay, well... Okay, so now you know why I'm not on tour with Clapton. That's what you get today. Alright, so remember what this does. Signal goes through here, Okay, signal is just uh, a uh, oscillating voltage that means something, that has some kind of information encoded in it, and this does, okay? And well, wait a minute, isn't that what this does? These are my headphones that I wear a lot, I mean a lot. Well, there's a wire right there, goes to the headphones. Well, shouldn't I be able to plug this in? right there and just listen to my guitar on this. That ought to work, shouldn't it? doesn't take much power to run one of these. I've got to be able to get that much power out of the guitar. Ought to work, right? No, it won't work. And the reason is because the impedance matching is wrong. So if you want, let me turn this off. If you want to work uh, in your job and you want to, uh, or you need to put together systems of electronics, things that talk to one another, sensors that talk to data acquisition systems, amplifiers that talk to s microphones, that kind of thing. You need to know what impedance matching is because if you don't know what it is, you may get the wrong answer and if you get the wrong answer, your system won't work right. So let's figure out how that is. It turns out, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and guess I'm a lot better with one of these than one of those. Um, here's how I'm gonna do this. We'll start by, by re reminding everybody what a signal is, okay? If I have time and voltage, okay, that's pretty much what an oscilloscope does. It just plots voltage as, as a function of time. And I've got some uh, oscillating signal there. That's what an electrical engineer might call an AC signal for alternating current, all righty? A DC signal doesn't change with time. That's called direct current, or sometimes they call it like a zero hertz signal. Um, usually this gets called a signal. That doesn't always, because it usually doesn't have any information encoded in it. Sometimes it does. All right. So if you want to know, I have a battery, I don't know what I did with it. Um, if you have a battery, that makes one of these. Okay. So that's, those are the two signals. And when you learn about resistance in a circuit, that's usually the letter R stands for resistance, and that usually implies that you've got a DC signal. There is an analogy to DC resistance, and that's called impedance. Impedance is usually written as the letter Z, okay? Analogous to R. That's for AC signals, that's for DC signals usually, okay? And if you, if you connect one piece of equipment to another, the, the uh, differences in impedance between those, those pieces of equipment matters. Here's why. So I'm going to, well, let's see, I guess I'll erase that. Before I start, I want to let you know, well, two things. Number one, the person who made that nice guitar for me is named Doug Hunt. He works in uh, Indiana. And uh, check him out on the web if you want. Also, the explanation I'm going to uh, present to you here was presented to me by a gentleman named Mike Jacobs, who's a really good professor in our department, and I'm doing this here with his permission. Um, so the way you start with this is, let's start with a voltage divider. Okay, let's say, okay, you're in a car, and a car makes 12 volts, okay? Uh, the, the battery in the car makes 12 volts, the uh, electrical system in the car makes 12 volts. But, I don't know about you, my little car has a giz in there that will let me plug in my phone to run it or to charge it. So I've got this little wire coming out here, and I think, you have to check, but I think this thing takes 5 volts. Well, if I tried to run 12 volts into here, bad things would probably happen. 
So I want five volts. Well, the, what I need to do is uh, use a voltage divider. Say if I have a voltage in, okay, maybe 12 volts, okay, and I have a voltage out, if I want to make that to five volts, I can select resistor one and resistor two so that the output really is five volts. Okay, that's, that's a voltage divider. You guys have probably seen those before. And uh, pretty handy. Turns out, even though this is a DC circuit, I can use this to explain what's going on with AC impedance. So let's do this. There's one of the rules here is that unless the, the resistance or the, the current has somewhere else to go, that the, the resistance or the, the current is constant all around that loop. So, okay, remember V equals IR, it's one of those, those voltage laws you learn. Well, here, V in equals the resistance and R out is the sum of those two, R1 plus R2, okay, or I can write uh, I equals V in over R1 plus R that. Screwed that up, didn't I? R1 plus R2. Okay, that's the first, first part of the puzzle. The second part of the puzzle is I want to know what that is. Okay, well, V out, V equals IR, I think. I, okay, that right there, and R, R is R2. So I already know what I is. I is down there. So I get R2 over R1 plus R2 V in. And then equals V out. Okay, I'm sure I can get, get myself out of your way here. Okay, another way to do this is to say that V out over V in, which is what we really want in this case. is that, okay, and that's what we're going to use. In fact, I'll write it over here. Okay, so there you go. That's, that's what we need. In fact, I'm going to erase this here so we can get a, uh, make some calculations. All right, well, the next part of the puzzle I'm going to call that Z out, and I'm going to call that Z in. Now, this is that arrow means it's analogous to, it's not exactly equal to, but it acts like Z out and that acts like Z in. Well, what does Z out and Z in mean? Well, it turns out, and this is one of these things that I'm sure somebody found out the hard way, you, you lose voltage trying to get your voltage out of a circuit. What the electrical engineers will say is that as you look back into the circuit, you see an impedance. And the impedance on electric guitar is tens of kilo ohms, probably. Okay, it depends on how you how you look at the circuit, how you design the circuit, but a few tens of kilo ohms most likely. Alright? So there you go. And every circuit has an input impedance, the, the resistance to voltage going in. Alright, well, this probably has a resistance of a mega ohm going in right there. All right, so here's why we care. Let's say, let's say it's not like that. Let's say Z out and Z in are the same. Well, if R, and I'm going to transfer from Z back to R, okay, so we can work in the DC world. Let's say R1 equals R2 equals R. Well, V out over V in equals R plus 2R equals 1 half. Well, dang. You know what that means? That means 1 half of the voltage that you make here gets to here. Okay, because remember, this represents the resistance coming out of the circuit, or the impedance coming out of the, of the supply circuit, and that's the, resist the impedance of the resistance going into, like, the amplifier or whatever. So this amplifier, it's a nice little amplifier I've got. And it, but it can only amplify the signal that gets to it. Well, if I only feed half the signal, half the voltage to it, okay, half the amplitude is what we're talking about, that's all it can amplify. Huh. All right, okay, let's try this. Let's say for the output impedance on the guitar equals 10 kilo ohms, and the input impedance on the amplifier, that is the impedance going into the amplifier, 
is a thousand kilo ohms. And these really are about the right numbers. That's pretty much what you'd expect. Well, let's see. That looks like we're going to call that here. Let's do this. That is going to be uh, R1, and that's R2. So my ratio of V out to V in is 1,000 kilo ohms over 1,010 kilo ohms. Okay, and that's 0 0.990 something. What was it? 99. 009, I know one pretty much. Okay, what that means I, I've got now, that means 99.01% of my signal gets to the amplifier. Perfect, that's what I want. Okay, I want to drop all my voltage across my load, all my voltage across my amplifier, and as little as possible here. So guitar amplifiers have really high imp input impedances. A mega ohm is not at all uncommon. Sometimes they're higher than that. Okay, so you get the idea here? Here's the problem with the headphones. Let's change these numbers. Okay, I'll change them a little bit. Let's say Z out on the guitar is 15K. Okay, Oops. that's not that unusual. Okay, 15 kilo ohms. All right, the resistance on a pickup could easily be that much. Okay, now Z in, so that's, that's going to be, by the way, uh, R1 now. Okay, R2. Okay, Z in. Well, what's the impedance on one of these? It needs to be a lot, a whole lot. It's not. Resi input impedance on headphones is between 16 and 32 ohms. So let's let's take the best possible case and make that 32 ohms. That's R2. So V out over V in, okay, gives me 32. Oh boy, 15032. Oh man, that doesn't look good at all. And that's going to be. Two one three. Okay, zero point zero zero two one three. That means zero point two one three percent of the signal that comes out of the guitar is going to make it to the headphones. Dang. So how do you fix that? Well, anytime you want to fix that, you put an, an op amp in between, a little preamplifier. The preamplifier has an input impedance that's very high, mega ohms probably, and an output impedance that's basically zero. Okay? It lives right in between the guitar and the headphones, and so you need you have a very high input impedance in the amp the preamp that can listen to the guitar, and then its output impedance is nearly zero, so it can drive the headphone amp just or the headphones just fine. Like you can buy these things, a little box you plug in your guitar and then you plug your headphones into that and you're good to go. Alrighty, so there you go. We uh, explained impedance matching using electric guitars and headphones. I hope this helps and I'll see you next time.